Hey guys, so welcome back to part 4 of my discord.py series. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to split up your files and how to organize it a little bit. And also be showing you guys how to do row restricted commands, right? So let's get started. So right now I'm going to be showing you guys how to split, split up your um, commands into different files so you can have better, better organization. So let's make a new command. Let's pass in the context. And let's set it to equal to true, right? So the same tough stuff that we always been doing whenever we make a command, we'll call it async function. We define a function and let's call it test, right? And now in this test function, we want to give it the CTX, right? The context. What do we want to do? We want to do some code in here, right? So we want to, let's say, await um, CTX.send. And let's say we just want to do a test is working, right? So if we run this command and we do exclamation point test, um, the bot would then send a, a message called the test is working. But let's say we want to have this command inside another file so we can organize our stuff better, right? Since we're doing a tic-tac-toe game, let me say it inside of that way. So we want to have our tic-tac-toe game, the entire game, inside of one file. We want to have all the helper functions inside those files too. So it's better to organize. So if we want to say like, let's change the tic-tac-toe game, we can then just change that file and go and know where it is. So our main file won't just be thousands and thousands of lines. It will be split up across multiple files for different commands, right? So right now I want the bot to be able to do ctx.send, right? So let's make a new fi file inside of our project directory up here, new and Python file. So let's call this another file, right? So we have another file now in here. Let's say, so now we want to do a CTX command, right? So we have to pass in that function. So let's make a, another asynchronous function in here. Let's define it and let's call it test2, right? So we're calling it test2 and what are we passing in? We're passing in the context from the main test, test1, right? And now let's do something. So what are we going to do? We're going to do the same thing that we got over here. So we're going to await CTX send, right? Right. So now there's now a function, right? That we can then import over. So now instead of doing this, we can just do await test2 and then we pass in the context. But right now we don't know what test2 is because we didn't import the another file.py into this file. So let's go all the way to the top. And now let's do from another file, import star. The star will represent everything. So if we want to just import test2, we can then just do test2. We will then import that function, right? When I'm doing the star, I want to import everything from that file, right? So let's go down here and test two should be available now. So now let's test if this works. So we will then run this function and let's go over to the Discord right here, right? So the bot's alive. Now when we run test, so we expect our function to go into the test two function, which is right here, and we expect it to grab it from here, right? So we expect it to send the test is working. Let's see if it works. Right. So now the bot is working and it's taking uh, information from another file. So now we have a way to split up our files and to split up our files between commands. So this is this is for better organization and how you can basically set up your files so it makes more sense to you. Right. So now let me show you some restricted commands. So down here, instead of the test function, let's say for the test function, I only want a user to be able to use it if they're a red, right? A red user. So let's do commands dot. So yeah, dot we're calling a function within this command class, right? So we're calling it has row. So if the user who's calling this has a blue row or a red row, then the user can then use it, right? So now let's call it and let's name it red. So we only want users to who have a red row to be able to use this. So now let's run it and test it out, right? So now I'm gonna bring over Discord. And as you can see right here, the bots are live now, right? So now I have no rows right now. I have no red, no blue rows. Let me test this out and see if it works. Let's call exclamation point test. So we expect it to send the test as working, right? If we don't, if we have this row, when we send the test, it errors out. It says that we don't have the red row, right? To use it. So now let's test it out on a blue row. Let's give ourselves the blue row and let's do exclamation point test. It errors out again and we don't, we don't have that row, right? So now let's give ourselves the red row right here. We're red now and let's call test. It finally works. So, so that's how you restrict commands based on your role. Okay, so now that restricting roles is working, we can then uh, add a new role, which is a gamer role, which is what we're trying to build, right? A gamer bot. Um, so now let's add a new role. Let's click on this little chevron. And now let's go down to server settings. 
So now that we're in server settings, we will then go into roles and let's add a new role. Let's make this role called games and let's make it a little teal color, right? And now let's make it different from everything. So let's separate it. So now that we've finished making our roles, we can then go to the website of Mojipedia. So now that we're at a Mojipedia, we can then look up some uh, little icon that we can use so all that your users can react to. So I found this little cool game icon, right? So now let's click on it and let's copy the ID right here. Now let's go back to uh, our code. So now that we're back on our code, let's add a reaction. So let's do await message.add underscore reaction and let's add the little game controller. So now that we add the game controller, let's rerun our code and let's see how it works. Now let's type buy, right? So once we type buy, it should make a new message and it should have three reactions now. Let's see if it works. One, two, three. Yep. And there's a little cool gamer icon, right? So now our uh, messages doesn't work anymore because we updated it, right? So we then need to go right click it, copy ID. And now we need to replace the ID for the on event, right? So our message ID, we need to update this up to the new one. Let's rerun it and it should give us the roles now. So now when you click on red and blue, it should give you that role now. So now we need to configure this so that it works with the game controller and see what roles it has, right? So now let's do this. Let's do an else of statement and let's do emoji is equal to and let's just copy down our little game controller. So now let's copy our game controller in. So now let's do role is equal to discord.utils. Dot get so we want to get something from the discord utilities function right and now let's get the guild the guild dot role from last time and now let's look for the role name game right and now let's do the same thing up here copy and paste this and do it right here now we can just highlight this click shift tab to re-indent it in and tab this back in now it's done. So now let's go back to Discord and see our bot function, right? So now that our bot is up and running, let's test it out. So let's add a red blue role. Now we're blue. Now let's add a red role. Now we're red. Now let's add the gamer role. Oh, so, okay. So we don't have, so our role does not have an ID. So now let's check it out. So our, yeah, so our name was games, right? So now as you, like you see, if we uh, didn't write the role, the role as the correct name, it won't function, right? So we need to paste this in. So it has an S at the end. Now let's rerun it. So now if we do roles, we should, it should work now. So let's do this. And now, as you can see, we get the games role. We can't deactivate it because we um, didn't type it right here. So we need to add the S here. And now it should work perfectly. So yeah, when you're adding the roles here like this, you need to be uh, careful with what your name is to make sure it's the same name, right? So let's go on here and now we can take away this role. Yep, perfect. Okay. So now we want to restrict our um, command. So we're not doing a test command. We're going to do a game command, right? And we only want games. So people who have the game role to be able to use this game command, right? So now instead of uh, calling this other function test 2 let's call it load games and now let's go into this function and let's rename this into load games and now for our start let's start our games and now let's um let's ask the user what games they want to play right so let's have to ask the user what games they want to play so let's do an embedded messages right so embed is equal to discord but we don't have the discord in here so we need to then go up here import discord right so now we can use discord classes and now that we have discord we can then do embed and now we can pass in title let's make the title equal to please choose a game right now let's do a description let's make a description and let's call it one the so one if you a user reacts to one it would then become uh, let's say tic-tac-toe so two would be rock paper scissors and now let's send it all right so await um ctx.send embedded is equal to embedded now let's test it out go back to discord so we don't have the roles, so let's, we don't have the game's role, so let's now try calling games. It should throw us an error. Now let's give ourselves the game role. Now let's call it again, games. Now it's asking us to pick a game, and it's either one for tic-tac-toe or two for rock, paper, scissors. I want to make this a little bit neater, so I want to add a new line right here. The way you would do that is you would have a backslash with an N, which would signify a new line. Let's go over here, rerun it, and let's type game. So as you can see right there, it has tic-tac-toe and rock, paper, scissors in separate line, right? Clean this up a little bit. Okay, so as you see right here, when we send the games command, it would then give us this embedded messages, right? But do, we don't really want this here. We don't really want our message to still be there. So we want to delete that message before we send out the new embedded messages. So before this, we would then do await ttx dot channel. So we want to get the current channel to win and we want to purge it, right? But we don't want to purge everything in here. We only want to purge the limit of one. So we only want to purge one item. So now let's try this again. Let's run it and it's alive. So now let's clear these two messages and delete them, right? Let's just delete them so it's clear. And now let's do games. Game, right? Call games. It then deletes our messages and then it gives us back 
the original messages without us anything. So it's so it would it doesn't become cluttered, right? So now we want the users to be able to choose which option they want, one or two, right? So now we want to do the same thing as we did up here, which is to go up here and I'll store this as a message, right? So we want to store our sense message as a message, and now we want to add a reaction, MSG the message that we stored and now we want to do add underscore reaction and now we want to give it a string right so let's go back to emojipedia so now that we're back in emojipedia we can see that there's a emoji for number one let's copy it and let's go back to our code let's paste it in here so now that the bot will then add a number one message called await msg dot add underscore reaction and now let's add a number two Okay, so now that we added this emoji, let's rerun it and now let's see what happens. So now that our bot's alive, now let's call it games and now let's see if it works, right? So now let's call it games and now our bot should add two emojis. Yep, a one and a two. Okay, so that's going to be it for today. Um, so next time we'll be going over how to wait for a reaction to be added a different way instead of the on reaction add event. Um, so instead we're going to be waiting for the reaction inside of the command itself, inside of the load games command itself, right? We're also going to be doing um, more tic-tac-toe logic and how to check for winners and losers and how to get in the user's like little icon because the way that the user will play this game is through a bunch of different icons that they can then select which bot they want right okay that's it for today Bye -bye. thank you for watching